Pat had completely given up the business after her marriage to Hubert Grigg collapsed. She'd married for the fourth time, Peter Knight, who was a bit of a stage-struck solicitor. She then started appearing on the stage again with Peter Knight's encouragement after a gala at the London Palladium where Pat had stopped the show. Pat stopped the show singing a version of There's No Business Like Show Business, rewritten for Boulet, there's no lady like that lady, like no lady I know, and stop the show. Boulet then falls and breaks her hip and couldn't do a date for which she was booked at Wimbledon. Pat did several performances there and packed the theatre. So all of a sudden, the name was out there again and she was booked for the whole of the summer season in 1994 at Chichester Festival Theatre in a review, highly successful review, called Noel Cole, Let's Do It. At about the same time, because of all this activity, I had a call, I didn't actually suggest it, I had a call from Thames that they wanted to do her. So we then embarked on this really rather comic scenario. Peter Knight really knew very little about the business, uh, he'd also been saddled with the problem that Pat had told all her previous husbands that if ever they were to do This Is Your Life, there was a hit list of people who were under no circumstances to be allowed on it. The hit was we, they were brought down to London, they were staying at their, their club, which was the New Cavendish Club in Great Cumberland Place. I was there with them. We were supposed to leave to go to the Prince of Wales Theatre, where Pat had been told she was going to do a documentary on the Prince of Wales Theatre, which she rather surprisingly bought. So we left, drove to the Prince of Wales Theatre, and she sat down, she looked very nice. She was in a kind of red check tartan suit and dark stockings looked good for her age and the man asked her about the Prince of Wales Theatre and she said well I've done two shows here and talked about it and Michael came in and did a kind of circuitous entrance in a kind of semicircle so that he wasn't in her eye line and he came up by the side of her and said Pat and she jumped and said oh oh it frightened her actually and um, she didn't know what to say. She was fairly speechless and said, oh, well, very nice. I was then deputed to drive in a separate car with a suitcase with our clothes, which I put into the boot and then forgot that I'd put it. And when we got to Teddington Studios, I got out and said, thank you very much to the driver. And the car shot off up the road with the suitcase and her clothes with me running after saying, stop, stop. And she made this tremendously confident entrance. I must say, she, she, she played up and went right down the whole of the front line, kissing everybody, her husband, her stepchildren, her cousin, the Ponsonbys, everybody, and waving to everybody and then sat down. And then they started bringing on all the, all the star names. In a way, what was important about this programme was that it really was a, a final curtain call for a large part of show business. Evelyn Lay made her last appearance. She was then in a nursing home. She wasn't able to do very much, but she did strum the piano, raise a glass of champagne and say good luck. Lord and Lady Delphont both made their last appearances. Carol Lynn, Lady Delphont had been Carol Lynn and had worked with Pat back in um, Black Velvet in 1939 when Pat was 18, said that Pat was singing better than ever and Bernard Delphont remembered employing her as a teenager at the Streatham Locarno and knew that she was going to be a great star. June Whitfield came on and gave a, a marvellous anecdote about when she was in Noel Coward's Ace of Clubs. And she said to Noel, of whom she was never in awe, 
No, do you realise I've been standing here for about ten minutes and I have absolutely nothing to do? And he said, never mind, Patricia. We are going to provide you with a little white wheelbarrow and then you will be able to wheel it up and down, up and down. Lewis Gilbert, who was marvellous in what he did, he filmed a contribution, he directed her in her only straight dramatic film when she surprised people by showing that musical stars can act if they're allowed. And he said, you know, um, I went back in my mind to when we did the film. I don't remember much about the film, uh, but he said, I do remember you. You were an English original. And I hope I'll work with you again. He sadly never did. But it was the most charming contribution, actually, of the programme. Wendy Toy, who um, had been a ballet dancer as well as an actress and had choreographed Pat at, at the age of 18 and said, this new st young star, exciting young star, Van Johnson, who flew over from New York, which I'm afraid was a mixed blessing. Van had a way of covering up his deafness. He had a scarlet lining, you know, so he did all this when he came on. Well, that took away a lot of lot of things, but he did, he really couldn't hear. So really, one way and another, you know, it brought down the curtain on an entire ear. It was always difficult with Pat because she always claimed that she had blocked tear ducts. This was her explanation for the fact that she, her eyes would water. I wasn't quite sure whether it was blocked tear ducts or whether she really was, at moments, rather overcome by it all. Pat wasn't used to hearing her talents lauded publicly and I think she found that she was rather overcome by it. And if you notice in the close-ups of this programme, she often appears to be quite close to tears. I think she was moved by the whole thing. She said, I'm three months short of 60 years in show business. There were still offers coming in and there were in fact scripts in her dressing room that had been sent because of This Is Your Life. And she said, enough is enough. I've done 60 years. It's time to bring down the curtain. So very sadly, apart from a radio series that she did with Howard Keel later, that was A, her last major television appearance, and B, her last stage appearance. But she ended on a high. I think partly, although she was tremendously touched by the whole thing, that people, like especially Lewis Gilbert, came on and gave wonderful tributes to her, and the Delphons too. Um, she was saddened by the passing of time. There was, an, there was an aspect of melancholy to it. You know, she, all, she used to say, Pat, this is your life, is of course a televised, it's, a, it's a filmed obituary, she said, that's what it is. And I suppose that there was a little bit of that about it. She felt, well, we've done This Is Your Life, not too much further to go, I guess, was, was partly her attitude, but, but grateful that they, all, that they all came on and said what they did.